Number 63, the ionization constant of lactic acid, which is CH3CHOH, CO2H, an acid formed in the blood after strenuous exercise is 1.36 times 10 to the negative fourth. If 20.0 grams of the lactic acid is used to make a solution with a volume of 1.00 liters, what is the concentration of hydronium ion in the solution? Okie dokie. All right, so let's just write down a couple of things that they told us, right? They told us that the ionization constant of lactic acid, there's literally the word acid in the uh, compound here. So I know that the K value that we're talking about is a Ka. A stands for acid. So we know that we have a Ka value of, they told us the ionization constant of lactic acid, la 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 la, is this. So the ionization constant of lactic acid is 1.36. So this goes with here, 1.36 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay, so we have that. So as soon as we see that we're using a Ka value, chances are we need to make a balanced equation. So let's go for it. The compound that we're talking about is lactic acid, which is CH3, CH, OH, CO2H. Now, when, what acids do in solution is that they donate their hydrogen ion, right? And the hydrogen is going to be the one that is the most uh, acidic that's bound to the most electronegative element. Now, in this case, we're going to break off this hydrogen, right? Because it's bound to one of these oxygens here. Now, the good thing about acids is that you don't have to write plus H2O. We could get around this. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say, okay, this, go this is gonna come to equilibrium because lactic acid is a weak acid. I'll just put WA. It's not one of our six strong acids that we should memorize. This one is just a random acid, so it's weak. And what you're gonna do is you're basically gonna find that acidic hydrogen and break it apart. This whole thing is one compound and the H that you broke apart is the other ion. So this is now going to exist as the CH3, CH, OH, CO2 minus, plus the H plus. And maybe I'll just put that in red, I guess. Okay, now as far as states go, anytime that you see charged ions, those are always going to be aqueous, and your weak acids or weak bases are always going to be aqueous as well. So everything here gets included in our Ka expression, right? Remember, because Ka's only aqueous and gases are allowed. Now, they're asking for the, what's the concentration of the hydronium ion, which is the H+. We're solving for this guy, question mark. All they said was 20 grams of lactic acid was used to make a solution. So they're telling us that we have an initial amount. This 20 grams is a initial value, right? 20 grams is used. They're starting you off by saying, okay, we're preparing this, we're using this to make a solution. Whenever they give you an initial amount and we're dealing with Ka values, we're dealing with weak acids, we're going to use an ice table. So let's just set it up. We make a line down here. Oh boy. Make a line down here, thank you. And we make a line over here. That's beautiful. That's good enough. And now we have I, C, and E. So maybe I can just extend this a little bit downward. Beautiful. Now I stands for initial. So you would think that, oh, okay, I have 20 grams, right? I, that's an initial, I could put 20 over here. But mm -mm, not so fast. The ice table is only used for molarity values. That's a gram value. Somehow I have to convert grams into molarity. Now remember the molarity um, formula, right? Molarity equals something over something. But it's basically moles divided by liters, right? It's a moles of your solute divided by liters of solution. In this case, they told us that we're starting off with 20 grams. So I can go from 20 grams to moles, 
because they already told us that the solution that we're going to make is a 1.00 liter solution. So I already know this number, 1.00 liters. We just have to find out how many moles I got, right? Maybe I'll just put like a question mark here because then I just take those two numbers and I get my molarity. So dimensional analysis time, we got to go from 20.0 grams of the lactic acid, which was CH3, CH, OH, CO2H, and I have to times by a ratio the grams of lactic acid go on the bottom, CH3, CH, OH, CO2H, and the moles goes up on top, right? CH3, CH, OH, CO2H, okay? Let's just maybe even this out. I'm just going to pull this over. And grams to mole is always the periodic table. You're always going to have one mole. And now I just got to go on the periodic table to see how many grams of the lactic acid there are. So let's take some time and let's see how much. I'm just going to work from left to right. So I see that I have one carbon, so that's 12.01 plus three hydrogens, three times 0 0.008. Okay. Then I have another carbon, 12.01. Then I have another hydrogen. Then I have an oxygen, so that's 16. Then I have another hydrogen. Uh, then I have a carbon. So I'm just adding them along as I go. I have two oxygens now, so that's 36. And then I have a final hydrogen. And we get 90.078. Okay, so grams cancel out with grams. Let's do the math. 20 divided by that answer. And I get 0.222. I think that's good enough, right? Yep, 2220. So just 0 0.222. And that is your moles. So now if I just go back here and I plug this in, right? So this would be equal to moles divided by liters. The liters is just one, right? So anything divided by one is itself. I just kind of want to show you that it's going to be the same. 0 0.222 divided by one is 0 0.222. And that's the initial molarity of lactic acid. So the 0 0.222 goes right over here. Beautiful. Now, if you want to pause the video, I'm just going to erase some of this math on the bottom because I need to have room. So just pause the video if you need to, but we're just going to get rid of this. So bye. Okay, there we go. So now let's see. Did they say that we started off with any of the uh, lactate or the hydronium ion? No, they just said that, you know, 20 grams was used to prepare this. So I didn't start with any of this. So zero. And I didn't start with any of the hydronium. So zero. Now, C stands for change, the change in concentration. Now, remember, if you start off with nothing, you could only go up from there. You can't get, you know, you can't lose anything that you don't have. So we know that this side is going to increase by some amount, and the lactic acid is going to drop. So because of that, you're going to plus on the product side and minus on the reactant side. But I don't know by how much. So we just label it as a variable, and the variable that we always use is x. So this would be minus x, plus x, and plus x. And with acids and bases, it's pretty much always going to be a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio, so you don't have to worry about like plus 2x or minus 3x. It's usually just x is right across the board. E stands for equilibrium. And it's just the initial and the change combined. So 0.222 minus x is 0.222 minus x. 0 plus x is just x, and 0 plus x is x. Now, since we have our equilibrium values, I can use those to plug in with my Ka. Now, in this case, right, Ka is always equal to the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. So in this case, we're going to have the two products. And remember, if you have multiple products, they will be multiplied by each other, divided by the reactant. So it would be the CH3, CH, OH, 
CO2 minus times the H plus and then divided by the lactic acid, CH3, CH, OH, CO2H. You kind of get, get the gist. Okay. So now, for the top part, right, we know that the Ka is 1.36. So 1.36 times 10 to the negative fourth equals something divided by something else, right? We have the two products divided by the one reactant, so x times x. But now here's a little trick, guys. If you have a really, really, really small Ka value, so in this case, it's uh, 1.36 times 10 to the negative fourth. So what this means is that at equilibrium, you're going to be mostly reactants. But if you started off with only reactants, right, you didn't have any products, and you're ending with mostly reactants, did this change really drop? Or was it maybe a small drop? Yeah, it was definitely a small drop, which means that this minus x is pretty negligible, which means that for math purposes, we could pretend that it doesn't exist. It just makes math much more easier. So I'm just going to put the 0 0.222 in here. We could always check at the end of the day to see if our um, if our assumption or you know minus x is good enough. It's called the five percent rule, but we'll do that in a little bit. Now we're just going to do our math. So this is cross multiplication, right? So one point three six times ten to the negative fourth times ten to the negative fourth times point two two two. I get. X times X is X squared. So X squared equals 3.0192 times 10 to the negative fifth. We want to get X by itself, so we just square root it. That gets rid of the square. And now I get an X value of 0 0.00, we'll say 549. Okay, cool. And now let's just see if our assumption is correct. Basically what you're going to do is you're just going to take the X value that you found out, which is the 0 0.00549 and divide it by the initial and times by a hundred. If that percent is five or less, we're good. But if it was greater than 5%, we cannot get rid of these minus X's and we have to do the math. So if I just take this number, and divide it by 0 0.222, and I times by 100. So 0 0.00549 divided by 0.222 times 100, I get 2.5%. Since this percentage is less than five, we're good. Thank goodness. So I can just get rid of this and just say, okay, my assumption was correct. And now, we go to the actual question. They said, what was the concentration of hydronium ion? Hydronium was this one, and it was only X. So X was equal to the hydronium ion concentration, and that was 0 0.00549, molarity. And that's the end. They didn't ask for pH, so we don't have to go that extra step. They just wanted the hydronium, but that was it. And there you go, guys. Hopefully this helped. Hopefully it made sense. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. And I hope to be talking to you guys in later lessons. I hope you guys are having a great day. Let's keep studying hard. Okay, bye-bye.